Hello, Judy. Right, you're good to go, Chairman. Uh, thank, thank you very much. If you could mute all the microphones in, in the usual fashion, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, colleagues and members of the public. Um, welcome to you all. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely in line with the provisions of the regulations introduced by the government to enable local government decision-making meetings to be held remotely. The meeting is being broadcast on the Council's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be available to view on the Council's YouTube channel afterwards. Councillors and officers taking part are requested to switch off or mute their microphones, activate the microphone when invited to speak, turn the microphone off again when you're finished speaking. Thank you. Visiting councillors, members of public officers not taking an active part in the meeting are requested to turn off their cameras until they're invited to speak. Please indicate to speak by using the raised hand facility. Um, I'm happy to introduce myself as chairman. Um, my name is David King. Um, and I, I'm a cabinet member for business and resources and I'll ask members of the cabinet to confirm attendance and to, to introduce themselves. I'll start with the leader of the council then go to the deputy and then to Councillor Higgins. So um, Councillor Corey. Thank you David. Mark Corey, leader of the council here as part of the RIF committee. Thank you and Councillor Judy Young. Good evening, Councillor Julie Young, Deputy Leader of the Council, here tonight on the Reef Committee. And Councillor Theresa Higgins. Good evening, everybody. I'm Theresa Higgins. I'm the Portfolio Holder for Commercial Services, sitting here on the Reef Committee. Thank you very much. And um, we have a number of officers attending, um, and assuming that they are, as I expect. I'll start with uh, uh, Mr Ian Vipond. Uh, good evening, I'm Ian Falcon. I'm the Strategic Director of Policy and Place for the Council. Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, Mandy Jones, she's here. Uh, Mandy's not with us today, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Brown, have we got? Thank you, David. Matthew Brown, Economic Development Manager. Thank you. Um, have we got Andrew Tyrrell? Thank you, Chair. Andrew Tyrrell, Client and Business Manager. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, I know we haven't got uh, Paul T. Smith at the moment. Um, yeah, Richard, Paul has just arrived, Chairman. I see. And then uh, Paul, Paul, ask Paul Smith to introduce himself. Sorry, my camera's not working at the moment, but it's Paul Smith, right, Commercial Director for Cultures Commercial Holdings, and I'll sort out my video camera. Thank you, Paul. Your vivid presence um, by voice alone. Uh, and Richard. Richard Clifford, Lead Democratic Services Officer. Thank you. Uh, so that's um, the most important first item done. Uh, who are we and what are we here for? And the answer is the RIF Committee. Um, item two, urgent items. There are no urgent items, Chairman. There are no urgent items, Thank you. And I believe there's no substitutions. That's right, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, sorry about the lag overlay. Um, that gets us to item four, declarations of interest. Can I invite um, any committee members to declare any relevant interest, please? None. Thank you. I should take it as none for all, that's my understanding. Um, item five, minutes of the meeting. I invite the committee to approve the minutes of the meeting of the 3rd of February. Now, I'm more than happy to take an indication by raising of, of your hands, please. That's Thank a great channel. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, item six, have your say, uh, Richard. We have no one registered to have your say, Chan. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Um, item seven is the Colchester Town Deal, and I'd like to invite uh, Matthew Brown, who's been at the heart of, of much of the work on this, uh, with his other colleagues as here, um, to make a presentation to us. Uh, we have a, a great paper, thank you, um, and then we'll uh, take uh, questions and views. Um, Matthew. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Richard. Um, can you just bring us the slides? Thank you. 
Yeah, my colleague Gillian will bring the slides up. Thanks. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Sorry, just having a bit of technical difficulty here. Just be a second. No worry. No worry, Thank Julian. Um, we are not going to go anywhere. Thank you. Um, sure, we'll be here in just a minute. Thank you very much, Jill. Um, could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So and uh, the headlines, um, very exciting for Culture Day, very good news. We were awarded as part of the uh, the Chancellor's autumn, uh, sorry, the March budget statement, 18.2 million pounds, uh, which from our bid of 25 million pounds, which is a sizable sum. Um, a huge credit to, to everyone that's worked on this, the, 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 can the County Council, the Borough Council, the local MP, um, Simon Blackshill, the businessman, the chair of the board, and the whole board, and all the partners, um, the project team. It's 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 great. It's it's uh, it's it's a lot of hard work, and it's really good to see. Um, this, we obviously had a successful award from government um, and a substantial award, so it's fantastic. And just to give the 18.2 million some context. As you can see, it's under 25 million, but there are other funding sources that have come to Colchester or are coming to Colchester uh, imminently and recently, which actually come to roughly 25 million pounds together. So in that context, it's yeah, it's more or less the, the full thing. It's just through, through different sources of funding. Uh, can I have the next slide, please, Jill? So what we have here is an extract from the town investment plan, which was um, part of our bid that we submitted last October to government. And what this highlights is the priority locations for investment, which are, which were, as you can see, will be the, mainly the town centre, the, uh, the Greenstead housing estate, and um, a cycle route that runs between those two places and some other interventions elsewhere. Uh, in, in the urban area of Colchester, it has to be said, that's the, the boundary that's in the green shaded area is the, the priority for investments. And that's remaining unchanged from our town investment plan and our submission. So now what I'm going to do is just run very briefly over some images of the projects um, that are in scope of the programme at the moment and, uh, and just keep it nice and visual, nice and light and just show you some examples. So if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. So starting with the town centre, um, what we're looking at here, left to right, is the Holy Trinity Church in Trinity Street, which is a 1000 AD building, grade one listed, then the oldest standing building in Culture Town Centre. And this, it will be repurposed to become a community hub um, in the course of the next uh, few years as part of the town programme. Um, in the centre, you're looking at Sir Isaac's Walk and this and a number of other streets in the town centres are currently semi-pedestrianised will be will be made curbless um, which, which will basically mean them will be much safer more accessible easier for people to use with disabilities push chairs and so forth um, so that's just and, and more attractive and green and, and just a nice place to be uh, so that's that's what's planned for those and to the right we're looking there at uh, artist impressions of St Nicholas Square. Now this one is already happening, it's going ahead because it was funded under the accelerated £1 million award from Towndale, which, which we received last year in 2020. So it's already going to um, consultation, final design and construction at the moment which is great and it gives a it gives a kind of foretaste of what we would hope to see in the other public squares which which we'd like to see um elsewhere in the town center to build for high quality very accessible very versatile space that can be used for a manner of uses such as outside uh, eating and, and and drinking and market stalls and and so forth events events and, and music and those sort of sort of cultural activities so very exciting and it's going to look very good when it's done um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So what we're looking at here, um, 
to, to the left, you have an artist's impression of um, the area. There's currently Vineyard Street car park. Um, it's an example, again, of, of an area that will have ultimately very nice, very attractive public realm, which in this case will showcase the, the Roman wall that's currently in Vineyard Street car park and make that a nice, accessible public space that, that showcases that particularly strong heritage that's there. And to the right, we have an artist's impression of Jumbo, which um, this one of the one of the projects in the in this scheme. We, uh, the funding here in this instance will be um, initially to undertake some emergency repairs to the building to safeguard its condition, and then ultimately leading on to supporting the the trust that owns the building to conserve the, to preserve the building, conserve the building, and help the that trust to secure uh, broader funding packages and, and other grants as it will be applying for in due course. So it's to help with the feasibility work, preparation work towards uh, bringing Jumbo into into a sustainable sustainable long-term use to the benefit of the community. And the next slide, please. So here we have um, a, a project which was actually funded slightly separately to the core town deal, although town deal is contributing. So we have here the former bus garage in Queen Street, um, which is going to become a digital working hub and grow on space. So it's primarily here to cater for the creative and digital sectors of our economy, which are strong and they're seeing continued um, resilience despite the pandemic. And there's a demand for space, for grow on space, for small businesses to expand, take on more staff and in a very high tech, tech enabled building, modern building with modern facilities and high quality space for people to, to work and co-work. And the intention with the ground floor is to actually have a, a more of an open plan digital working hub with the very latest in technology, which could include 5G technology, very fast speeds of data and, and bandwidth for um, tech enabled businesses, um, to, which will help. The point of this being to stimulate those businesses that are more high tech, tech enabled, dependent on fast data transfer, large files, et cetera, to work and co-work in a, in a hopefully a state of the art facility. And uh, the next slide, please. Okay, so coming on with the digital theme, um, here we have to the left the, the Wilson Marriage Centre, which is run by Adult Community Learning, Essex County Council in Barrack Street in Colchester. And the intention here is to create a digital skills hub, um, which will be a place where local people can go to develop their skills or refine their skills in digital, which is very, very important as we come away from the pandemic. And um, we've seen a, a large shift of services going online and more information going online and so on. So just to help people to adapt to that change that we see, um, this facility will be will play a key part of that. Um, that infrastructure to enable culture to move forward in that, that journey. And then to, the technology on the right is, is basically the 5G aspect of this is looking at going beyond what will happen anyway through market forces. So going beyond what would happen by the telephone companies ultimately investing in 5G uh, infrastructure, we actually have the opportunity to, to accelerate that in targeted places. Um, town centre being an example, where we'll bring um, more investment from companies, it will actually stimulate and make that investment go quicker and bigger than it would be if left to market forces alone. So the idea here was a very targeted, very specific 5G rollout, a million pounds or there, not that much actually, but thereabouts would give you uh, something that's, that would actually get something off the ground, get something running straight uh, quite soon um, in a way that wouldn't happen if it were left to market forces alone. So it's about stimulating something that could be very exciting for tech businesses and the wider economy. And the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, a, a, another key aspect of the whole program is that young people have been adversely affected by the pandemic to a larger extent than, than most other age groups. So in recognition of that, there's there, there's desire to invest in youth facilities, so, so youth clubs and so forth, um, to vastly improve the experience of young people, the opportunities for young people, inspiring young people. Um, so that this is quite a crucial aspect of the programme. And the next slide, please. So one of the key themes of the programme as a whole is regeneration. And it, we've targeted the regeneration on this particular community, Greenstead Housing Estate, and this is Tamarisk Way, which is the centre of the Greenstead community with the shops, the library, the community centre, etc. And the idea is to completely transform the heart of that community with brand new housing um, facilities, 
community facilities, it's state-of-the-art facilities, and um, that investment will just kind of help that area to to absolutely um, to to be sort of taken uh, forward as a, as an area for development and, and improvement which will be of massive benefit to to the community um, and if you take that in the context of the cycleway that I mentioned in early, a few slides ago it's going to be better connected um, physically and digitally to to the rest of the Colchester um, economy so it's it's going to really help people living in Greenstead to benefit from those opportunities as they come and that cycleway will link the, the housing estate with the university and the town centre so it really connects Greenstead in really well to to that to those networks and those routes. And then the next slide, please. So uh, walking and cycling infrastructure, again, this was a theme of the, the government prospectus, which we've responded to. And we have the opportunity to improve um, several several neighborhoods in Colchester which have opportunities um, already to, to see a shift towards further walking and cycling to actually drive that uh, further and faster than would otherwise be possible. Um, in targeted places, targeted areas, where at the moment there's either limited facilities or there's infrastructure and bottlenecks that basically hamper the cyclists and, uh, and walkers from using key junctions and key parts of the town centre um, and key parts of the town. So that the idea being to actually look at those, target them, and and what you'd have is, and this this ties in very neatly with um, some some other funding from Department for Transport and some wider routes. Um, that would link in seamlessly with and it actually gives us the chance to expand that network in a really cohesive way and a really structured way so that walking and cycling becomes more attractive in the borough as a whole and easier and safer and more reliable as a mode of transport for local people. And then the next slide, which I think is my final slide, please. Thank you. So just to summarise um, where we are and what happens next. So the council, as the accountable body, um, has received the heads of terms from government, which is a it's a kind of a formal legal document which we must uh, complete and submit within the next week or so. Um, now I can I can advise that the cabinet meeting last Wednesday approved the the heads of terms for the council. The town deal board also last Wednesday approved the heads of terms on behalf of the, the town deal board and the town deal board chair. So really, we've just now got to complete and return the agreement which is great. The next steps will be for the project team and the, and the board, the town deal board, to start to think about other sources of funding that we could leverage to try and make up that 18.2 million as much as we can back towards 25 million, which would enable us to deliver the whole programme. And that's that's our ambition. That is our ambition at the moment is to try to do that through through partners, through other funding bodies and so forth. Um, and then the next steps beyond that will be late May. We will then have to submit a, a sort of a more um, confirmed list of projects. So a confirmed list of what those projects are, their values, their timescales and the broad parameters of those projects. Um, and that will include identifying any which are going to be treated as fast track projects. So those are ones where either we've already done a lot of the feasibility work and or business case. So they're much closer to being ready to, to start or they're actually physically ready to go and they just need the money to come and then they can sort of start straight away. So we've, we've just got to identify those and work through that process over the course of the next sort of six weeks, something like that. Um, okay, and that's, that's it. So thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, um, Matthew, that's really helpful. Um, I'll, I'll start off with a couple of remarks, a clarification for those who are watching, if I may, um, and then I'll go to colleagues in the order I've seen that seen the hand. I think the, the the first thing to say is thank you to you personally and to the wider team that you've described. Um, I know we've done this last week in Cabinet, but the RIF is a place where capital and infrastructure come together uh, in an integrated whole. We're going to talk about other projects in a moment, um, and, and it reflects huge amounts of work by many people to get to this point, particularly as this is cross party, cross town. So one Colchester approach has included all sorts of people, including both county and ourselves, the MP, um, other party influences and stakeholders. So it's uh, that knitting together of all those views is really important. I wanna make that sort of play. And that's the way in which we have to carry this through that we expected of us. Um, and success and, and from my perspective, and I think it would be the We Are Colchester Board's uh, perspective, will depend on us sort of holding ourselves together. And why not? This is 
a huge opportunity. The, the minor clarification, because I know there is a real interest in, in this, is in the in the slide which addressed um, youth transformation. The thing we ought to draw people's attention to is absolutely that's the ambition. However, that ends up folding out, and it'll be widely known that youth zone is in the ring. There's a conversation happening between officers and and on site, but it's it's a conversation to go through the next weeks, the next couple of months, if necessary. Um, you know that 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 is at the heart of what we're looking at. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't want people to see this as done, it's not, but I wouldn't want them to see it's not being actively and positively pursued because it is. So that that would be my sort of um, only broad observation. And then I'll sort of turn to colleagues to draw out um, what they can or questions they want to make. Uh, at the close, Matthew, I think it'll be really important uh, if you pick up on conversations that we've had today, uh, some of us, uh, around the process, and in particular this point, which is prioritization. Um, people will notice that 18 million is not 25. <laughs> um, and, but I think it's really important that we give some confidence that, they, that there is no need to jostle for position coming up to the line. It's not how it's going to work. We're having those conversations already about uh, phasing, timing, um, and, and, um, and how we might roll the projects forward. So this is absolutely about not excluding. This is about seeking to include to get all, all this set of integrated projects over the line in the best possible spirit and the best possible way. And if that's okay with you, Matthew, and as a question, it, it is, that's a reasonable summary. And um, I'll go to uh, Councillor Theresa Higgins, Councillor Mark Corey, and then Councillor Julianne. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Matthew, for the um, presentation. And thank you to all your colleagues who have done it. Um, I know we had this same presentation at a cabinet, so I just want to reiterate a couple of things that I said then. Um, first of all, amongst the youth provision, I think, as David has already said, the chairman has already said, that we ought to mention youth stones because I think they are a, a big part of it. And maybe we can look at um, venues and things that are important for that. Um, I just want to double check. Is it the... Um, for Jumbo, is it is no longer owned by Mr. Flackman, but is actually owned by the group that's looking after Jumbo, because I think there's been speculation on social media about that. So I think we just need to clarify and make sure that that's correct. Um, my final point was about Sir Isaac's walk and making it curbless. Have um, When we do the consultation, can we make sure that we include the blind and partially sighted people? Because curbs actually for them means that their guide dogs know where to walk. I know this is detail, but I think it's important that if we're going to make the town centre safe for everybody, um, there's got to be some delineation between what is a pavement and what um, where the curbs would have been to allow those people to you know, lead independent lives with their dogs walking around town. And I just don't think that we've actually talked about that. I think we've talked about wheelchair users, which is great um, because they'll have flat surfaces, but actually guide dog users are also an important part of our community. Um, I think, Chairman, that's basically all I'm going to say at the moment. Um, just uh, apart from one final comment is to say about the cycling infrastructure. Um, I think this is my last public meeting, but as you know, I am a cyclist. So I'm willing to tell people where the cycle um, problems are. And I know the County Council have done quite a lot of work over the pandemic to put cycle routes. But if you've tried cycling up North Hill, it is full of potholes. And also when you get to the top, it's on a slope. And this is damn difficult to push off again at the traffic light. So I think they need to look how um, they put their routes in, where the routes go. Is it flat at the top when you've got to take off? Have we got rid of some of those horrible barriers, which means you've got to get, virtually get off your bike to chicane through? Um, some of those pictures that we saw there were great because they had just bollards, which means you can cycle easily through. Um, and I'll just say it here, my most hated sign is cyclist dismount with no... Um, where are we going to go next? You know, there should be pictures of bicycles along the road so you know where to go. Cars know where you're going to jump out from. Um, there's lots of issues on that, that point. So um, even if I'm not here physically as a councillor, I'm still willing to be involved. I'll probably join the cycle campaign and then I can be involved that way. But, you know, I do cycle around town. I probably know where most of the cycle paths are. And I really think if you want to get that job done, um, you've got to have people that actually cycle around town and not the engineers who are lovely but sometimes they don't cycle. They just see it from the car point of view. That's it, Chairman, thank you. Thank you 
very much. I'll go to Mark. I'll just say before I do that having been uh, deeply involved in the active travel steering group chaired by a county and we work alongside them, that there is a, an awful lot to look forward to. It's been a, a, a cautious, slow, in the best of senses, thoughtful um, couple of months of working or more working through those routes. And uh, I know they absolutely, uh, with the advice of uh, Culture to Cycling Campaign, as among the many access groups who are having a voice on this, business included, want to get the best kind of compromises. And, and clearly the idea of investment is to make it better. So I am hopeful that um, it will be a smooth ride for you, if only downhill. Um, Mark. I actually think Julie indicated before me, Chair. So a bigger part, and then I'll go to Julie. And also Baker. interested to hear Ian's answer on Theresa's point about Jumbo before I come in. Thank you. Thank you. That's very gracious of you. Um, I've got a few questions, and I think it's really um, welcome to have this opportunity to have a think about this and have a conversation about this in public. Um, obviously, Cabinet, we, we did um, have the presentation there, but time is always tight at Cabinet. We've got lots of other stuff to discuss, so it's great to have another look at this. I guess my questions um, are a little bit, firstly to say, Matthew, thank you to you and uh, those officers that have worked with you. It's a fantastic result. Um, and it, it wasn't one um, without hard effort. I know that. Um, I, I'm interested to ask um, how the prioritisation will be um, conducted um, and in particular, um, quite a complex structure that we had in developing the plan. So we had the assembly, um, you know, which um, attracted um, some people to, and they would have been involved. We had the advisory group and we had the board. Um, and um, ultimately things get signed off by the board, but how are those three prongs of the um, process in leading up to the development of the plan, how are they going to actually be able to get involved and shape that going forward? Um, it's always uh, much easier if you've got all of the money, less easy if you've got less money than you thought you needed, and how those uh, schemes are going to be prioritised. Matthew, um, I believe um, in the pictures I recognised... Um, Mini Holland in Walthamstow. <laughs> I hope so anyway. Um, and I wondered if you vis visited um, Walthamstow and looked for yourself um, at that scheme because it is state of the art. Um, and I'd love to see something similar being developed by these proposals. Obviously, that was um, a lot of cash Walthamstow got um, to invest in those um, cycle routes. Um, so we won't be able to perhaps do it as much justice as, as they have, but it'd be good to get some of those roads looking a bit like Walthamstow roads. Um, and a specific question around um, the Heart of Greenstone project is, um, I um, still don't really know what a civic universities agreement is. Um, so it'd be really, um, you know, pleased to have a bit more information about what that actually means in practice, because people in the community start to interpret that in their own way. So it'd be good to know what's behind that. Um, and, um, you know, I'll leave it there, Chair. Thank, thank you very much, Julie. And um, I, if I could just say, I think you're absolutely right. It's good to have a chance for a public conversation. Um, the, the, I will just repeat what I said earlier. This is certainly my perspective. And certainly to the extent that I help shape it for us collectively, uh, the way I'd want us to go about this. This is not about ruling out. This is about how we make sure that we get um, all these good projects across the line. But you know, the point's accepted. We, we nonetheless have to still do that work. Um, could I ask Ian to pick up on the jumbo point, which I missed, my apologies, Theresa, um, and then, we'll, uh, which was about ownership, if I recall it correctly, and then Ian asks you to, uh, sorry, and then ask, um, ask if we could have an answer to the other. Uh, points, please, Matthew. And uh, then we'll go to Mark, who doesn't mind waiting as leader of the council. His patience is good for him. So, Ian first. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I think a specific question on ownership. My my understanding um, is that the uh, 
the local building preservation trust don't yet um, have, have ownership of the um, of the jumbo. I think the the they had a, um, an agreement with the owner when they last submitted the uh, heritage lottery um, uh, fund application, uh, which is about how they could e effectively um, gain control of the building. And I think that's what they are hoping to uh, proceed with um, if uh, if funding is uh, uh, is secured. I believe that's the situation. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll let Matthew answer some of those questions, and, and um, uh, if he wants, I can come back on on points. If you'd thank like. you very much. Okay. Um, thank you, Matthew. Thank you, and thank you, David. So I'll pick up those. Um, points in, in themes, so I'll take them by theme rather than um, in, in the order that they came. So in no particular order, starting with cycling, um, yeah, absolutely get the message that there's no point in having disjointed cycle lanes that stop abruptly and and people are asked to dismount randomly. So yeah, I'm, I'm one of the cyclists that uses the infrastructure, as, as I'm sure some of my colleagues on the call are as well, and I can see how frustrating that is when you try to use them. Um, so clearly, yes, there'll be there'll be very um, some detailed work done with with colleagues at the County Council, Essex Highways. Clearly, they they are the authority for for the highway, including cycle infrastructure, and they are um, we're working with their project managers now just to make sure everything's coordinated and dovetailed, and you you do see a seamless, cohesive cycle network, not not these random start and finishing um, lanes and things that don't work properly. Um, and yes, Julie, that was a mini Holland, that was um, the Wolf, Wolf and Forest. I haven't been personally, um, but I have. We had a presentation from the leader and and some of the officers from London Borough Wolfham Forest early on in developing our town deal, town investment plan. And I agree, it was very inspiring to see not only what they've done and, and the engineering solutions, but also how it's been received by the community and how there's been a, a, a lot of support now that it's been implemented and it's been seen to work. Um, it's it, this businesses have actually seen, you know, improved footfall in the, in the shops and so on. So, yeah, it's, that was a mini holiday and that was very successful. Um, walking. So, so Councillor Higgins mentioned the curb of streets. So, yes, we will undertake a lot of detail. Uh, consultation with all the stakeholders that use our town centre and you mentioned uh, partially sighted and people that use guide dogs and just to reassure on the on the scheme that's moving fastest from the town centre um, St Nicholas Square that is currently um, being consulted on being led by the architect that's that's running that scheme and yes um, those groups will be um, definitely consulted on and engaged to help shape the ultimate and I do take the point about delineation of uh, where, where people should and shouldn't be walking and those points will be taken on uh, in the project. Um, Civic Universities Agreement. These have been, um, this, it's still quite early days for these. There's, there's a few of these being developed nationally. Um, various universities around the UK are starting to work with these. And it's essentially the university um, is making a commitment to work with and support its local community and the areas around the university. So for us, uh, clearly Greenstead being in very close proximity to our university um, is, is, a, is a community of you know, particularly of, of, of interest and, and value. Um, so this could be, just to give some crude examples, it could be where staff and students get involved in some, some, some volunteering, some social giving, some, some sort of general community level activities on the ground. Um, it's too early to define what that is yet. It's, it's still early days. Um, but it's 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 along those lines, and it's it's about bringing the community and the university more cohesively together um, than they are at the moment. I think that's pretty much. Oh, well, the prioritisation points and the assembly I, and the points made well made by uh, Councillor Young and, and initially by Councillor King. Um, so just the prioritisation. Yeah, the, the general principle is, if possible, uh, we would like to sort of try and draw in other sources of funding to to. Uh, kind of ideally run all the projects as they stand at the moment um, which means reaching out to other potentially funding bodies and uh, partner organizations and, and as, as Councillor King said there's the point there about timing phasing of projects when things might be done or done do one and then do, do more of later um, as other funding becomes available there's some detailed work going on on that it's too early to kind of sort of give any more detail on that at the moment because it's it's as you can imagine quite complex and involves quite a few partners and stakeholders um and and decisions and and using our existing networks um the council and partners to have those conversations but that is on on, on the way and, uh, and finally councillor young's point about the assembly and the advisory group so um yes there will be possibly not right now but we are planning in detail this, all the steps of engagement 
and consultation that will take us right through um, to the program. We, we're not there yet because we have to, and I do take the point about how, how do we make sure um, everyone has the opportunity to be part of those, those conversations. Um, but rest assured, yeah, we're, we're planning for that. Um, I don't know if any colleagues have got more to, to say on that at the moment, but thank you. Thank you. Um, if Ian's got anything more to say, um, if not, you can sweep up after us. Um, I'll go to Councillor Mark Crawley. Thank you, David. Um, and thank you to Matthew. I know we have said it publicly at other meetings, but the, the work that you've put in um, guiding our team from the Borough Council have put in a lot of work, working alongside Essex County colleagues uh, and others. It really has been a tremendous effort to turn it around quickly, to get together a lot of competing uh, ideas and thoughts about what will be good for the town, to bring together business ideas. It's, it's been a fantastic project. And David, I want to thank you as well. I know that I'm on the board, but we get to, to do all the, the yesing and knowing and the ticking of the, of the good ideas. You've helped bring them together. So thank you for chairing that advisory board and also for working on, on some of the projects. Um, for example, on the, on the Youth Zone project, working with Onside um, Charity in the background, looking at a reassurance of how to fund that project, hoping that we do take that, that fantastic idea forward because this 8.2, this 18.2 million plus the 1 million that we had up front is the perfect opportunity to invest in our, our history and our heritage, but also in our bright future as well. And that involves young people. That involves making our town even more inviting for our residents to go in and enjoy, to attract visitors in as well, and to enjoy the great heritage and cultural and creative uh, aspects we have to this town. So I really do feel positive about this being a jab in the arm really, like uh, we we're all hoping for at the moment, or some of us have had, and um, to help us coming out of the COVID recovery. We already, and David, you will know, running the finance portfolio for the council, have put in millions of pounds ourselves, or are putting in millions of pounds of investment into this borough. And it's absolutely right that we hear about this report and the further steps at this committee, because this is about the committee, about how we invest money um, on a regular basis on a recurring basis that delivers back income and this will deliver income to the council this will also deliver income to cultural assets this will deliver an income in a sense of well-being and positivity for our borough far beyond economical um, economic benefits but also it will deliver jobs it will deliver um, well-being and happiness for the people of colchester and visitors to it as well and i'm glad to hear um about the jumbo steps that, that are being taken. I do hope that we can uh, see something um, really positive happen there. That's something that's been on our horizon uh, for years and hopefully will eventually be sort of sparkling in the distance. So I won't say anything more, but I am really um, encouraged by the work that's been done, the positive relationships that have been cultured by this council, been encouraged by this council with our partners has led us to this point where we could be successful with um, future opportunities thanks to this fund and future opportunities hopefully for young people, for residents and for visitors going forward uh, in the next decade or so. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. Can I just go around one more time? Well, I think uh, as Councillor Julie Young said, there is, there is an opportunity, it won't be the only one, but it certainly is one that's open and public um, to sort of talk to talk through points of detail or to bring out and shine a light on what else we think would be helpful to people listening or to, to ourselves and colleagues. Are, are there any, any other sort of questions or observations that um, any committee members would like to make before I turn to the officers and then close on the item? No, okay, well, look, can I, can I thank everybody? Uh, can I ask Matthew, I do have a point or two, as I say, at the end. Is there anything that you would like to add or Ian Vipon? Nothing for me, thank you. Um, uh, David, I, I just um, uh, wanted to add, I think on uh, backing up the points around consultation, that um, we, we will, of course, be going to the groups that um, are already established, the, uh, the assembly and the, uh, the, the advisory group. Uh, but actually, that's just the just the start. I think as we get uh, towards understanding the uh, the projects in, in terms of their business plans and how they'll be uh, implemented, it will be important to go to the local people near those projects. So be that the 
the heart of Greenstead or some of those streets that might become livable streets, uh, that will all be about consultation with local people to understand uh, you know, how those individual projects are actually taken forward on, on the ground. Just wanted to make that point. Thank you. That, thank you very much, Ian. I, I, that's really important. Um, and I, in some fashion, less well probably, I would have wanted to make it. When, when we look at the paper on which the presentation accompanies, there is in um, it's paragraph 5.4, now fuller list of the steps that lie ahead and, I, and, I, and um, we need to sort of just remind ourselves in all of us and those we're talking to as colleagues who have a passion about one item or more, this is a package. Uh, this is built solidly. It's been signed off by all the partners. Uh, that decision was that we are Colchester Board's independent judgment bringing Colchester together. And it reflected all that what you've just touched on in. It reflected those circles of engagement. So. I think the important thing to say is we start from that. We start from where we got to, and then the key is to do all we can to deliver that uh, within the funding we have and the funding we're going to draw into the pot, uh, accepting that that might reflect itself in sequencing. And yes, that word prioritization, but you know the principle is doing all we can to deliver it as was agreed, and to do so in the same style. As, as openly, as cross-party, as cross-interest as possible. And thank you very much for bringing out what might be obvious, but not everybody will think about it, but because it will take, in some cases, not just months, but several years, or sometimes even a little more longer, but there will be, there has to be, the kind of early consultation with those affected that will give um, members on this committee, their constituents, a real sense that this the ownership uh, that's been created of what we have when we get to design and then to delivery that we can do all we can together to make sure that we keep that sense of it's owned by those who live and are affected by what we do and we need to remind ourselves because it's beneficial it's positive not just in jobs and improvement but in terms of bringing um, powerful objectives for improvement regeneration and change um, into the heart of our community so Thank you very much, Ian, for rounding it off in that fashion. Are there any other comments or views from any on the call on this paper? And unless Richard, you shout, I don't see any. I see Mr. Bipong, which is brilliant. Um, no channel. Uh, no, no further indications. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. In which case, um, could we go through to as an issue of note? Um, given that Cabinet are supportive of this, as discussed in the paper, that's our decision to, to note, but clearly we're endorsing uh, the offer. The stages and steps set out inside this paper, uh, the approach to inclusive consultation and a commitment to uh, fill in the shortfall in funding and to deliver as fully as we can the project program plan that was endorsed by the We Are Colchester board as well as by us as the accountable body and so with a big thank you to all the officers on this call and our colleagues and friends in county in particular who are so vital to this as well as to our MP and others who have fought for this and influenced this and a big thank you to them and um, on that basis can I just ask colleagues confirm that they're content to set the paper, the presentation, and the way ahead as described. Thank you very yes, much. That's Carrie Chan. Councillor Judy Young for showing. I'm taking silence as assent on this occasion, yeah. and, a, and a bit of waving is always very helpful, so thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Now that gets us through items three, four, five, six and seven and we've now got a paper on the rolling investment fund projects which uh, just draws attention to uh, other capital works and their current status again to ensure that we publicly um, declare where we are and have a conversation i'm assuming andrew that you might uh, just like to bring through uh, bring out a few uh, headlines for us
unless unless Paul T. Smith who is going to do otherwise. Good evening to you, Chair. Um, Andrew, Andrew Tyrrell and myself were going to do our traditional double act where Andrew was going to position us. So if Andrew is unavailable, what I can do for you, Chair, is take you through the very quick presentation, which was a imagery, and I will then be able to give you some update with regard to the capital program. So Richard, if you could launch, or if your colleague could launch the presentation I sent to you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much indeed, Chair. Next, next slide, please. So we're very much aware of the sports park, um, a huge investment for the council, funded uh, through the HIF money as well, uh, from Homes England, and also other some grants. I'm very pleased to say that subject to the COVID roadmap, there is going to be a soft opening of this sports park on the 26th of April. Uh, so the whole facility is going to open. And uh, what we're going to be seeing there is obviously the restrictions internally. So the, the gym and no group exercises, no internal badminton, not unless from the same household. And the Paddy and Scott's Cafe, which you can see there on the ground on that image in the corner with the glass wall, is going to be offering a takeaway service. So the whole facility will open on the 26th of April. Uh, subject to the social distancing and all outdoor sporting activities, the cycling, the football and the rugby are permitted as long as they are COVID permissive. And it's important to understand that the wider reach that this is going to be providing to the community. So Sigma are going to be taking space and they're going to be taking that space on the 26th of April. The rugby league and the outdoor training, uh, they'll also be taking uh, uh, part in partake from the 26th of April and then the Colchester Rugby Football Club um, subject to the finalisation of the lease uh, will then be taking occupation of their Colchester Rugby building uh, which is on the right hand side uh, again from the 26th and moving away from the, uh, the Mill Road and we've got the, the English soccer football and the archery uh, as well which will be eventually moving up to. Next slide please. Then from the 17th of May, um, we will then be able to have the indoor uh, group exercises, again, subject to the roadmap, some team sports, and of course, the Paddy and Scott's Cafe will be fully open. So you're seeing here in these images, the indoor section, which is part of the reception and the Paddy and Scott's concession, and then the indoor uh, main hall, uh, which is all lined out and some of the members around. And then that is one of the indoor, this is the indoor studio um, that will be used. And then subject to this, uh, finally, uh, on the 21st of June, uh, again, subject to the roadmap, then the whole of the sports park will be fully opened and operating without any COVID restrictions. Fingers crossed that nothing changes between now and the 21st. And uh, cricket, indoor cricket and cricket will be moving there from October. So um, there is quite an extensive amount of activity now is going to be happening at the sports park. And this is an absolutely fantastic new centre that is going to be opening up. And it's been very proud to be part of the team that has delivered such an excellent um, building and centre. Go to the next slide, please. So as a continuation of the Colchester Northern Gateway, we have the Colchester Northern Gateway South, as it is uh, known, and that is the major urban extension of North Colchester. And just to the north of that diagram is where the sports park is on the other side of the A12. Just to remind um, the committee that this site is going to be bringing forward 45,100 square meters of commercial space, a health campus, the over 55s village, which will provide 260 homes, residential housing of which 105 is going to be affordable new homes, leaving 245 private new homes and the community green, and of course the retention of the rugby club building there as a new community center. 
The image there is of the walk, and that walk is bisecting the scheme. And this walk is actually a very large space. It is a congregation space. It's a space that can be enjoyed. And it is a complete connection from Mill Road going through this development and connecting up to the footpaths and cycleways that are going to be connecting, going up to the sports park. And we have the image there of the energy centre. And the energy centre is currently very nearly going to be going out for tender so that we can then start to build that and have the energy centre commissioned in line with our grants and also in line and readiness to provide heat network to CNG South. Next slide, oh sorry, yeah. And um, with regard to the planning, um, the sustainable transport strategy has now been lodged with the county, with Essex County highways, and we are still negotiating that. And once we get um, agreement from Essex County Council highways that they are happy with the sustainable transport strategy, we are hopeful to get uh, CNG South to the planning committee meeting for decision uh, at the end of April. So on this slide, we've got the LFFN, which is a very important infrastructure project that has been taken forward. So we know that we have got 3.3 million pounds of DCMS funding, and that is for the infrastructure core works. And that work is progressing, and that is predominantly the, the pink lines and the blue lines that you can see there. And that work is progressing, and it's hopeful and that's going to be complete in July of this year. And we know that this service is aiming to provide one gigabyte per second, which will make Colchester a very much a ultra fast broadband centre. Uh, and that is really through the, the large connection of the infrastructure that we have going down to Tally House, uh, which was put in last year. Um, we've also got the VX Fibre, who have committed a £10 million investment to facilitate end user uh, connection. And they have already completed five kilometres of the installation work at Shrub End. And to be clear, the council will own the digital infrastructure and it will be renting out the usage um, to the end user providers. Next slide, please. There's a minor bit of duplication here with regard to the town centre projects. Uh, that are being taken through and I'll focus on the elements that Matthew Brown, my colleague, um, didn't mention. So we've got the former bus depot there, so we've got the £3.77 million pounds from Sellup to take this forward and we ask to have the £900,000 of match funding from CBC. It is hoped that this will generate 86 new jobs and uh, from hopefully between 10 to 15 new businesses that will come forward. The scheme has gone through its consultation period and the planning permission has been granted this month. So this scheme is very much going forward. In fact, demolition and archeology span works are now out for tender and we should be seeing uh, on-site activity in July of this, of this year. Next slide, please. So a similar slide to what you saw in Matthews, which is St. Nicholas uh, Square which is, of course, uh, an important gateway from the east of uh, Colchester and in coming into Colchester. Um, the concept design, so the St Nicholas Square Working Group commissioned all the concept designs and the public consultation was taking place. Um, as, well, as well, you know, Chair, because you were chairing that meeting. Um, and of course, the planning application has now been submitted. So again, excellent to see good progress being made on this. And following a successful determination of the planning, there is a hope that we could actually see work commencing in May of this year uh, at St. Nicholas Square. Next slide, please. Then moving on to the Mercury Theatre and the Balkan uh, Gate Public Realm. We've spoken about that at length, so I won't dwell on that too much. Uh, but just to say that the works at the Mercury Theatre and the Balkan Gate uh, public realm works should be finished uh, this summer. 
And indeed, that will actually tie in very well with the Mercury Theatre reopening. Right now, the Mercury Theatre is now starting to see its staff return to the offices and to operate from there. And their current timeline is on the 21st of June. They will commence uh, private viewings of their new and enlarged um, theatre. On the 26th and 27th of June, they'll be opening up their new cafe and bar, which will also be unrestricted if the roadmap uh, does not change. And that is all leading to their very first production post um, all this work that's been carried out there, which is going to be on the 30th of July. And we all do hope that that's going to be a huge success and fantastic to see that uh, coming forward. And then if we could just move on to the next slide, please. We have a point in the, the paper as chair about the microgrid, and this is at its feasibility stage. These are generic uh, images that I'm showing you here because the feasibility is going to be looking at Colchester Northern Gateway, uh, where we're looking at a ground-based solar farm. <clears throat> Excuse me, nothing more than about five acres that would deliver a sufficient electricity for the, the plan. And that is going to look to see if that could um, provide <coughs> photovoltaic produced electricity to the sports park. So to augment what we have already built at the sports park, and to further reduce its carbon uh, footprint by the use and provision of photovoltaic uh, electricity. And we're also looking to run that through to Colchester uh, Northern Gateway, the south development, to augment the sustainable um, energy uh, that can be provided from our heat network. So the desire, the goal, the objective for Colchester Northern Gateway South is to have our heat network providing hot water uh, to the premises and then to augment that <clears throat> with the photovoltaic energy uh, going from this solar farm and also the fair. <coughs> Excuse me. And this will have a much larger benefit to uh, the council because the electricity produced and not consumed uh, or utilized during the day will then obviously feed through into the national grid. And then the council's electricity that it uses that takes up that surplus will then be brought back from the national grid or the electric provider, should I say, um, at a slightly reduced rate because we are then a producer of electricity as well. Well, thank you very much, Chair. That concludes my um, very, my presentation. I was going to say brief presentation, but my presentation. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. And um, as with the paper, uh, to you, to Andrew and colleagues, you know, I have to sort of start, and, and it's nice to be able to do it by sort of saying, on behalf of all of us, you know, thank you for a fantastic job. Um, I like saying we all do, because it's true, and it serves our residents well, um, that your, your team and you, you know, you're award-winning. Uh, and that serves Colchester residents really well. Now this means not only do we get a pace to project and delivery, we get an imagination to some of it, we get some real expertise, we get some subject matter experts, the microgrid's a good example, to be honest, and, and we get then a bottom line uh, value and effect which helps our revenue and helps us deliver essential services, the kind of things that people think of, but which um, the success of Amphora um, help make possible to the high standards we set. So um, you know, it's a, an opportunity publicly to say to you and to all your colleagues, you know, thank you very much for the report, the presentation, but uh, the, the months, the years of work, which is going at a great pace and with some really great results. Um, I'll go to Councillor Mark, thank you, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Mark, Corey, and then Teresa. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you, Paul, and thank you to the team. I, I just, I, I visit councils around the country as leader, you, you get that opportunity in working with a local government association. And I'm always so pleased when I come back to know that we are an ambitious council that has aspirations for its residents. And this is uh, a package of items um, that Paul's team 
um, with us and, and with um, uh, many other officers across the council have developed over time that really will offer so many benefits from leisure, sports, um, homes, elderly care, health care, but also green initiatives that power these developments as well. So for me, it ticks many boxes. And I know that some people say, oh, you're seeing houses be developed again. And what, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? Well, if we weren't an ambitious council, we'd sit back and developers would come along, take pieces of land. We're doing it ourselves. And by doing it ourselves, we deliver income for our residents to provide better services. We deliver affordable housing uh, within the schemes instead of um, getting sort of something not delivered from uh, developers as, as much as we would have asked for. So we deliver on targets for affordable housing and we deliver on the green agenda. So for me, this ticks all the boxes and there's so many exciting bits. I could um, reflect your presentation, Paul, and talk uh, about a lot of it, um, but I won't ask too many more questions. But I wanted to say with the... Um, with the boulevard i really liked how that is going to be a green lung within the um whole development there and i did see some artistic displays of sort of micro energy generation um are those going to to work through um from the designs into real life and i just wanted to ask about the energy center as well because we had talked previously about that being open and i know we've had some issues with that but about any public um sort of education boards, anything on there that says, look, this is what this energy centre does. This is what it's doing. It's powering these uh, estates nearby, whether the industrial, commercial, or the residential stuff. And I just think it's really important. We encourage um, our residents and businesses who see this energy centre to say, you can do it too. This is what we've done, etc. So just those two points mm -hmm. from me. Thank you. Um, thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Corey. I can actually advise uh, the committee that our in-house expert, Michael Woods, has actually been approached by other organisations uh, to actually, just actually advise and help guide. And we've done that on, a, on an open basis where they haven't had to delve into any detail, any confidential matter, and it hasn't been of any significant time uh, of Michael Wood's time, but we are uh, very much open and very much uh, looking to actually see if we can help because we, we are aware that we're not quite um, revolutionary with regard to our heat network, but we are taking it forward and Bayes are very interested in how we're taking this forward. And so, that, so therefore, yes, when the energy center is open, it will be rather possibly disappointing because the expectations might be for some grandiose um, mechanical devices in there, but that should probably be quite, quite, quite boring because an awful lot of it is underground uh, at the head of, uh, of the five boreholes we've got there for the injection and the re-injection of, of the waterfall. Um, so, so, I, so definitely, yes, we will be making sure that it is open and it is um, available. We've got the website and we can launch more information on the web website when that is appropriate to make it much more publicly aware. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Higgins. Yes, hello, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Paul, for the presentation. That's really... Uh... Um, fascinating um, and thank you to all the officers involved and it's a shame that actually we need to extend our fibre network to the next door um, borough so that Andrew Tyrrell can actually join us properly because I think uh, <laughs> there's a few issues with his uh, line collection but I'd like to thank him as well for all the work he's done as well. Um, just a few few, few little comments more than, than, than pointers but something about the energy centre at the end. Um, first of all, um, Mark and I went to visit the Northern Gateway Sports Park yesterday, and it is fabulous. Um, I'm not a gym person, but even I could have spent time on those bikes in that gym. So, um, you know, well done to everybody on, on that, because it is looking fabulous. And I put it out on social media, and I know the borough has, but we've done a bit more as well to encourage people to, to look at it. So that's good. The, the walk is great. The fibre network is, is, is good. Um, I said we just need to maybe work with next door to get it um, even extended. Um, the mercury and around that area look fantastic. Just to pick up on something that um, Councillor Corey said about the energy centre, 
Um, you said there may not be much to see, but maybe actually that's the point we could use it for something else as a bit more education. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the wind, wind turbine at Swaffham and their eco center. Um, that's a very good educational place. And maybe we could, you know, use that center to put some education about energy in it. Um, even if they can't see much above ground um, of the actual machinations, we could do that as an, as an education project um, and get schools there to come understand about green energy. You know, I think there's an opportunity there that we could use it, that centre space in a different way that we're thinking of at the moment. Um, so that's just a, 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 a something I'm throwing out to you. But just to say from my part of view, um, I think I'm glad that the council went down the route of having its companies. I think you know you've all done very well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Paul. Thank you very much indeed, Chair. Thank you very much for your kind and supportive words, Councillor Higgins. Um, I think it's an excellent idea to, uh, having been around the Swaffham uh, wind turbine myself uh, several years ago, I know exactly what you mean. And I think something of an education base around the energy centre and explaining how the system works, how we're extracting heat, how we're re-injecting it, and how it is sustainable and how we're reducing the carbon footprint and helping the council to meet its, um, uh, its, its reduction of its carbon footprint, I think is essential. So thank you very much indeed. It's something that we will definitely take away. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Teresa. Um, Julie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, the presentation we've had today gives a really good high quality um, visual display of what is to come, what is actually there in some cases. Uh, um, you know, we need to get the message out as much as we can about what we're delivering, which means it it's kind of remi remi reminds me of how um, in, in Britain we, we failed, I think, to badge things um, being funded by the EU in the way that we should have done. And, and then we did used to get an awful lot of EU funding uh, to, to do projects. And I remember when going abroad, you would often see by the side of the road funded by the EU. We didn't manage to do that in this country. Um, so I'm not sure everybody understands what Amphora is. So what they do understand is the Colchester Borough Council's logos. And so we do need to make sure people know that this is badged by Colchester Borough Council. And that is things like the grid, as Mark has said about the energy source and also the sports park and all of that um, that's been developed up there. So I make a plea to make sure that's clearly identified as Colchester Borough Council's work in bringing that to fruition. And finally, Chair, um, completely understand that we have to, um, you know, go go on sort of, um, you know, move around the boroughs as isolated as we possibly can. But it would be good for other cabinet members to have the chance of doing a visit, um, as um, Councillor Higgins and Councillor Corey had that opportunity um yesterday so i'd certainly like to go and see the finished product and i'm sure other cabinet members would like that opportunity too thank you very much uh, councillor young I, I i endorse all of that and taking pride in the best of senses and what we collectively have done um is the right thing and people don't understand unfortunately uh, the great work that's been done, uh, but it's under the collective council umbrella, and so it's a it's a very reasonable request. Um, Paul, um, what's your view? Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you very much, uh, Councillor Young. Um, the first one is on the comms plan. Yes, we do have a very much um, communications plan. We have all the websites, and we're making sure that we're making full use of those. And we have the pleasure of hosting the Women's Cycling Tour later this year in September. And um, the, although the, the, the final route has not yet been completely agreed, um, it will obviously be included in the sports park. Um, so that's going to be another great uh, way that we're going to be advertising what the council has done and uh, brought forward. And with regard to the branding, as, as I'll refer to it, 
we are very mindful that everything is CBC. So there is always then the statements are always going out that this is another great scheme funded by Costa Borough Council and it will have reference to and for purely as the, the, the fully owned subsidiary uh, of the council uh, for its council cert for its commercial services. Uh, but everything is very carefully made sure that it is known as being the council uh, and, um, and for is very much the agent. Uh, with the exception, of course, of the housing company where land is transferred to the homes companies and that's truly trading as the homes company. And certainly we have done a couple of site visits um, over the last year and we can certainly organise other visits as long as they're all COVID compliant uh, with regard to the social distancing. So um, I can certainly um, take away that desire and I'll have a word um, with um, probably yourself, Chair, and see if we can organise a list of members who may, may well be interested in having another site visit. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, um, Paul Smith. I, I think, Paul, it will be good uh, on the latter regard. Cabinet uh, comes up to very interesting um, time um, at the beginning of May, so it might be quite nice towards the end of April uh, to have a and we won't say swan song, but to, to mark what's been uh, an extraordinary two years, really. Uh, no, no elections in that period, which is unusual for us in Colchester, um, but uh, uh, in terms of local elections anyway, but a period of absolutely intense effort. And um, and I hope if, if there is a, those watching from the public will will bear us, bear with us if we would say it would be fantastic for us who in our small way contributed to as cabinet members to have a look at the product um, in its latest state um, um, before we go into the interregnum that's the elections and then the changes that may or may not follow. So yeah, that would be really great, Paul. We'll come back to you on that separately if we might. Yeah, um, Teresa, you've still got your hand up if that's old or new. It's new. Um, it's just to say that Andrew Tyrrell has rejoined us. So I'd just okay. like to, to um, you know, thank him for all the work he's done and, uh, you know, to, to carry on all these projects that are, that are going. And I just said to, to Paul, Andrew, that um, with the, the energy center, I'm suggesting that we might do an education center as they do have at the um, Swaffham windmill, you know, there. Cause I think, you know, if we can educate our, our young people or anybody about how we're saving energy, that would be very useful. So it was just to include Andrew in my remarks cause he had disappeared from us for a bit. I did suggest Andrew that maybe our LFFN should extend to tendering, but <laughs> so that you could be with us <laughs> all the way in future, because obviously there's a few issues we're trying to get connections. That was just my comments. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, um, Councillor Higgins. That's very well said. And uh, Andrew, you know, we do try to acknowledge the work of you and your colleagues when we get the opportunity. You do huge amounts of it, all of you. Um, they churn out papers which give us and the public and the wider members. Um, a good sense of where we're at and that's really important uh, the reason for the riff in part is to ensure there is good public process and uh, today in my view has done that very well visually as well so thank you to you thank you very much Teresa for raising the points you have um, we have in front of us uh, a paper uh, the presentation um, thank you uh, brought out the key points in a very uh, visual and helpful way added to the paper the paper against item eight I just want to ask if there's any other sort of supplementary points any feel they need to offer or any questions they would like to ask of Andrew or Mr Smith. I can't see any, that's fine. Um, Mr Vipon, sir, um, is there anything that you would care to add or are you good to go? Um, good to go, I think, on that one. I thought that was um, a very useful summary by uh, uh, Paul uh, there and uh, summarise the uh, the the excellent work. If I dare say that, I think it is excellent work that's being uh, undertaken on behalf of the council uh, by by its companies. It's uh, it's really rewarding to see those come to fruition. Many of those projects have, uh, dare I say, it, been uh, years as a twinkle of uh, somebody's eye, at least in terms of ideas we you know we thought of many years ago. And it's just it's really good to see them. Uh, uh, being uh, implemented in uh, in such a way. 
Thank you very much uh, um, to Mr. Vibond and publicly. He has to bear, bear with this. He is the strategic director of policy in place. His hands have been all over for good or ill. Uh, many of the things we talk about vastly, uh, the good outweighs the contentious. And uh, Ian, so publicly, thank you very much in all seriousness from all of us for the work that you've done. Um, I think you're spared another RIF committee before you leave us at the end of April. <laughs> I think uh, this is um, uh, my last um, public meeting on behalf of the uh, the council, last council meeting I'll attend. I, um, uh, I've, if you indulge me slightly, I would say it. Uh, in my 26 years um, here, I've probably attended something in the order of uh, over 2,000 council meetings of various shapes and sizes. And um, uh, it's remarkable that uh, my hair hasn't turned grey yet, I note <laughs> on that one. But just to prove you how old I actually am, uh, my first uh, committee and one I did most work with in my early days was the planning committee. Um, and uh, my uh, chair of my first planning committee was uh, a certain councillor Goss, but it wasn't the councillor Goss that we know and love now. It was his father. Father. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Well, that says all that needs to be said. Um, I've, I've got a story or two where I won't share while we're alive, um, but might later on. Uh, Ian, thank you seriously very much. Um, you know, if this is the last of a couple of thousand, um, this will have been um, shorter and, and more equitable uh, than many of those I know would have been. But it is a, a great testament to the quality of character, uh, style and knowledge you've brought to CBC that you are so widely respected. And I know that that will be said by, um, um, well, I think without exception will be said by other members. So on behalf of all of them, a you know, sincere thank you. You've you've earned whatever counts as rest. Um, although I, I hope you have lots. I'm sure you will have lots of plans ahead. But no, thank you very much for the record on behalf of all those not here. Uh, well done. If you'll accept that from us, thank you very much indeed. Um, no other questions or comments on the paper. Um, I would just sort of make one observation that the, even the somewhat smaller projects, which don't always get publicity, are, are themselves. Uh, really worth noting uh, and again they don't happen everywhere so in 5.4.3 we're talking about um, the final stages of, of CCTV replacement with a brand new digital um, system. Um, I love the idea most good citizens would but we can use the words this has led to multiple arrests hopefully of the right people I'm sure I'm sure that's so so now, this is an, just another example of a council that looks to improve and it does fit our mm -hmm. times when we have real concerns about personal safety uh, it is really good news uh, that we have an extensive modern modernized uh, cctv system either in place or coming through i know it's not our direct remit here tonight but i think it's, it's worthy of the acknowledgement uh, or investment in public safety which council lily leads on um, if nothing else from anybody else, I shall start, which is great news, and um, we'll move, move the recommendation, Richard, in paragraph two, which is to note the contents of this report and the progress made to date, which we've explored in some depth and brought through very well by officers. Um, thank you very much. I ask that we show if we're content. Thank you, we Chairman. Are. That's That's noted. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so that item is now done. Right, Richard, uh, exclusion of the public, that is not necessary tonight. That's not necessary tonight, Chairman, so you you can formally close the meeting. Thank you very much. Then I, I ask we um, do what we must and, and close the night. I thank those who have stayed with us or watch us later. Uh, we're doing some fantastic things and our officers are and our partners in the county and elsewhere across Colchester. The benefits are coming through now and will come through in the next few years. So to all of you who spent some time watching us, so thank you very much. Uh, and, and thank you to my colleagues on the RIF committee and the officers supporting us. Uh, thank you all very much. Good night.